how's it going? Um, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm gonna keep you company uh, if you if you need that. Uh, if you don't, you can turn me off. You you don't have to have me on. <laughs> um, I give you permission. Weird. So um, yeah, I, this is a vlog where I just like talk about things and keep you company. Although uh, today today is very cool. It's the first episode of this show. Uh, to be a quilt specific or quilt related um, episode. The content will have to do with quilts a little bit. It has to do with fabric and if you're a quilt person, uh, fabric is a, it's a big part of, of, of what you do, right? It's a big part of um, uh, your practice, your quilt making practice. You can't really make a quilt without fabric. And so, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an unboxing, an unbagging of fabric that I received from the London Modern Quilt Guild today. Today, a, a beautiful soul, uh, Dorothy, dropped off a bunch of fabric, uh, including this box, and a huge bag uh, of fabric down there. Don't worry, you'll see it in a second. Um, she dropped it off in person. She rang my buzzer and I went down and I have fabric now. So the reason it happened or how it happened was that um, I had a gig for the London Modern Quilt Guild. I do lectures a lot um, since the pandemic started, of course, they're all over Zoom, um, but, and they're booked way in advance, you know? Like sometimes a year, I just booked a gig in 2022, like in November, I think, they get booked way in advance because quilt guilds, most of them, they really have their act together and they want to, you know, they usually invite a speaker uh, every month for a guild meeting uh, or they invite a teacher to teach a class or sometimes, you know, both. And I used to teach patchwork, but it's, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. Um, but I give lectures and, and so they had booked me for a lecture. Um, yeah, long time ago. And I, and so I got to, I got to London in April and I was to have that gig like that week. So I would be, would be in London doing the gig for the London Modern Quilt Guild, which is lucky because if I was home in Chicago, I would have to do the gig at like three in the morning or something. Or like, I don't know. Yeah, the time difference is brutal. I've done, I've done it the other way. Last year when I was here, I had several gigs to, to complete uh, back in the States. So I did one lecture at three in the morning because it was like the West Coast, you know, and their meeting was like at eight o'clock p.m. It felt strange, but it was a success. Anyway, so so I had this gig lined up for the London Modern Quilt Guild, and it was a really, it was a stressful couple weeks when we first got here. I mean, we were quarantined for two weeks, um, didn't go anywhere. <laughs> um, we, we were testing, and we were doing the NHS, you know, process, talking to the NHS, and just doing everything by the book, you know? But it was, and that was like, ah, just because it's a pandemic and you just traveled across, you know, an ocean and, um, and also, you know, it was really overwhelming being here because we're going to be here for a little while and we didn't pack much. We decided not to pack much at all because we are going to be here for a little while, Eric and, and myself. But I mean, we just didn't want to ship a bunch of stuff ahead of us. Um, because you know, it, you can buy a can opener, you know, when you get here. And I don't like having two can openers in my life, but it didn't make sense to like pack a can opener or ship a can opener, can opener across, uh, across the pond. We were like, well, we'll just take what we need to get started and then we'll get the things that we need once we're there. And uh, so, so yeah, so I loved being with the Modern Quilt Guild that, that week that I, I saw them, the first week that I was here in London, um, because I really needed some community. You know, I really, I really needed to see some friends, some friendly faces, uh, even if I didn't know them, and I, I only knew like one of them, Marianne. Um, it, was, it was awesome. It was awesome to do that, to do that lecture and the Q&A portion afterward just really made me very, very happy because um, I needed it. You know, so it was kind of a lucky break because I, I didn't know for sure that we would be in London that exact uh, week that I was going to give that that talk. But it all worked out. So in the course of the conversation that day, I mentioned that Eric and I hadn't brought much at all with us, you know, to London. And, um, you know, including like sewing supplies and fabric. There's no way, you know, I was going to 
I mean, if I was going to pack a can opener, if I wasn't going to pack a can opener, there's no way I was going to, you know, pack some of some fabric, right? Fab, half of my fabric stash or a little bit of my fabric stash back at home. Um, and yeah, and that's, by the way, if you're not a quilt person, um, we call the fabric that we have um, at home or in our studio, if we're so lucky to have a sewing studio or a quilting studio, we call that fabric uh, the fabric stash. Because, and you have a fabric stash when you make quilts because you, uh, buying fabric is really fun and you tend to buy a little bit more than you probably need from project to project. Buying fabric is like, sort of like buying clothes, but sometimes it's more fun because it fits, <laughs> it always fits. Um, and sometimes you buy a little extra because it's so great and you think, oh, I might use this fabric in another project. Uh, or I got to get some of this fabric before it's gone forever. That happens a lot because there's a lot of great fabric out there. Um, or sometimes you you get you know fabric for a project and you just end up with extra for one reason or another. Um, and so this this stash grows and grows. And uh, you prune it, you feed it, you tend to it, you know. And, and it's a lovely thing. But of course, I did not have a fabric stash with me. And I'd really like to make at least one quilt. I'd like to attempt some kind of quilt while I'm here because it'd be great to be able to say, yeah, I made this quilt in London, you know. Um, so, the, so before I knew it, right, um, I, was, I was to receive some fabric uh, from members of the, the Modern Quilt Guild here in London. I hope I didn't like hint around and ask for it. I don't think I did, but um, I think they were like, what do you need? Well, we'll hook you up with anything you need. You know, it's probably what happened because that's the way quilt, quilt people are. Um, but regardless, um, I, I do have a few like sewing supplies. I did bring some like scissors and a hoop and stuff. Well, I ordered a hoop when I got here, but I have thread and I have needles, but fabric, you know, I wasn't going to turn down fabric. So I have this fabric, as I mentioned, uh, right now, and I haven't, I haven't looked through it. So I'm going to look through it now with you on camera. It's not live for you, but it's live for me. So yeah, it's an unboxing. It's an unboxing. I like unboxing videos. So let's, let's take a look. And I want to thank the Modern Quilt Guild, uh, of London for doing such a thing. It's very, very cool, very generous. And, oh my God, I really like fabric. It's been too long since I made a quilt, it's true. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's the way it is. I've been busy. I wish I'd get busy making a quilt. Okay, oh God, what if I just cut my hand open doing this? I wouldn't show you that. I would just not, I would just not show you this video. You know, it would, it would, I almost did it. I got to pay attention. Er it would end up on the cutting room floor, as they say. The cutting room floor. <laughs> I'm really trying to get the, the filming thing worked out. And I know I, I've said that like <laughs> on almost every episode so far. But, um, but it's really true. And the trouble with where I am, it's a great little place to do this. But it's also um, the weather in uh, England, at least the southern part of England where London is, um, interesting weather changes often changes frequently as in like from hour to hour so there'll be like great light you know not lots of sunshine in here I'm like awesome great I'll do my little vlog filming like right now and then uh, a storm a storm will come in dark dark clouds will come and just uh, you know change everything so until I have like a sound studio it's kind of the way it's going to be so I'm hoping if I scoot back a little bit, you'll be able to see the colors, you know, well enough. Okay, by the way, uh, they were like, what kind of fabric should we send? And uh, I, I mean, it was like, whatever fabric you send is going to be amazing. But, you know, I, I like scraps. I like scraps because I have been doing pictorial quilts, like needle turned applique like little, I've been doing some blocks like on their own and then this other quilt for, for the pandemic to commemorate the pandemic. And it's been a year. I started that a year ago and it's like not done yet. Um, but it's not, it's not too far now. I'm getting close on that. So 
Yeah, so I really like scraps because I need lots of different colors, you know, for like trees and animals. Some quilters will have just huge cuts of fabric, like, you know, yardage, three yards of this or three yards of that. And you do need large cuts for a bat, the back of a quilt or, you know, different things. But I really like the small stuff. Okay. Already. This is amazing. Okay, so this particular, this particular uh, box was from a Ms. Macon, M-A-C-H-O-N, Macon, Macon, I don't know, crap. But uh, that's, who, that's who sent this via Dorothy. Orange polka dot. Whoa, blue, blue, um, that's uh, Dimples, isn't it? Isn't it called Dimples? Uh, it's that like classic blender, blender fabric from, I think it's called Dimples, right? Um, from P&B, oh, I don't know. Well, I'm really rusty on my who's making what, but I, that's a really classic blue. Thank you, it's awesome. Oh, and I also mentioned uh, small scale prints. I like like small scale, small scale prints because I don't know, they've just always been my favorite. So here, here is some, oh, that's really great. That is so great, I love it so much. Um, it looks like Liberty, but I don't, I don't know. It might be Liberty of London, maybe. Um, great, some blue, some like solid-ish blue, always helpful, always good. Oh my gosh, there is, there's Liberty. There's Liberty of London Tanalon. I'll put some pictures in because you need to see it. It's really fabulous, of course. Thank you, thank you, oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay, Free Spirit Charm Pack. Denise Schmidt, whoa, Denise Schmidt, charm pack, solids from Free Spirit. Oh, guys, it's ridiculous. Look at all this. Fabulous prints, a nice stripe, green. I needed green. I needed everything. <sighs> Thanks. Thanks. And it's not even, it's not even all. <laughs> wow. This is really cool. I'm like legit crying. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice. It's so nice. Thanks. So now there's this and like there's this huge bag, that huge bag of fabric and I'm just gonna like, I'm freaking out. It's just really sweet, you know? Anyway. And Dorothy, when she came over, she was like, do not buy any fabric. Like, please let me give you some of mine. And she said she even had a piece of fabric from, from like the mid nineties and a pattern from my mom and Liz Porter's magazine. She had like the pattern for the, the quilt from the 19, a 1996 issue of the magazine. And she had the actual fabric that was suggested to be used in that pattern. She's like, the fabric and the magazine were in a bag together just waiting to be made, and I think maybe it's time to make it. I was like, it is. So she's like, don't, please do not buy fabric, because I'll give you more. So greens, pinks. I know the color isn't great on this, I know. I mean, look at this. Oh, now, yeah, see, now the sun goes away, that's great. Great, you can see more, I better go quickly. Oh, look at these, look at the black. Look at all this black and white. Look at that, look at that. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, wow, okay, now, these, these are fabulous. I mean, you need a black background, a black and white. Black and white is an interesting thing. Maybe, maybe someday I'll do a little bit of tips and tricks, some, some sort of quilt-like quilt videos, quilt, quilt videos where I don't have to like, I don't know, get a cutting board and a jib camera and like, or a cutting mat, <laughs> see how rusty I am. Um, you know, doing how-to videos. It's just really involved. It's really, uh, it takes a lot of production. But I do have lots of, you know, thoughts to share about fabrics, um, fabric selection, working with volume and prints and directional fabrics and things. Anyway, black and white is very helpful, but sometimes it can be tough because the contrast in a black and white fabric, when it has both black and white in it, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to know. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not saying that this is not amazing. It's amazing. Um, 
black and white fabric can be a challenge to use in certain patterns because you you have to have contrast when you make patchwork when you do quilts <laughs> when you do quilts and uh, black and white has the darkest dark and the lightest light in the same fabric and so sometimes it can be challenging to get a good contrast but believe me it can be done and I shall try I shall try amazing uh, good great burgundy love it I kind of want to here let me show you this you can see the colors a little better now because the the blasted the blasted sun is a little bit behind the clouds thank you okay I shall go quickly Ooh. <gasps> Look at that, oh, it's a, it, that perfect polka dot. Oh God, that perfect polka dot. Oh, 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 oh. Clouds, clouds. Oh, and they're the perfect size scraps. I'm totally gonna cry again. Oh, and there's a card. I'm gonna, thank you, like look at all these. Like look at all of it, you know? In every color that I might need, you know? I think I gotta put this on. I'm not, I mean, can I read the card? Like, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. It's perfect for my hair. Yeah, I'm into it. Oh, if you don't know about the painting uh, to, my, to my right, <laughs> you should go back and watch the, um, the last episode. Maybe it's not going to stay there because I realize... It might not be appropriate, but this is a vlog to keep you company. This is not a vlog that is known for its, you know, stunning sets. Okay, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. I can't, I can't, I don't know, I can't. Look, there's even more, there's still more. <sighs> Purple, paisley, mustard floral. Are you, do you know what this is? You know what that is? I think that is, isn't that a Denise Schmidt from, from days of yore? No, no. Is it Amy Butler? Is this Amy Butler? Is that Amy Butler from back in the day? My quote people? Did I just nail it? You know, there should be a little game show, a little fabric game show where you, you, anybody who's been in the in the quilt world for a minute has to like guess whose fabric line it is or who, you know, they have to like reach back into their brain and remember whose fabric line it is. I think this is Amy Butler. It's pretty thin though. Anyway, we'll see. Yellows, darling, orange polka dot, different orange polka dot, love it, love it. Oh, the solids, the solids. I mean, I think it's pretty weird for me to keep doing that, but I'm doing it. Um, oh yeah, oh, this is that, that pearl, that, I think this is Lizzie House, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, okay, Lizzie House, isn't that that pearl necklace? I mean, look at this, I owe it to the quilters here in London to like make a quilt, even just like a small thing, you know, out of the fabric that they gave me. I mean, that seems pretty appropriate, don't you think? Oh, I love this, look at this, it's like a toile. Okay, I glanced in the camera and I saw how ridiculous I looked, so I'm gonna take that off, but it might come back one of these days. Um, just go gorgeous, I mean, I just don't even know. Beautiful paisley, love it, very 70s. Here's more, there's just a little bit more. They filled this bag. Whoa, what is this? Oh, it's so cool. Oh, how interesting. Now I could definitely find out who this is. Look at, the, look at this. Look at this, this is like a fussy cutting. Oh, it's bicycles. Bicycles and bicycles. I've been riding my bike all over the place. So see, makes sense. Love it. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Oh my God, it's a postcard of one of my favorite quilts from the Shelburne. I saw this quilt in person. It's another card. Can I read it? I mean, oh, it's from Mary Ann. Okay, I'm reading it. She was the one who, who I knew, right? The woman that I actually, you know, had met several times actually from the London Modern Quilt Guild who invited me to speak to the guild. And she is just delightful. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I hope you don't mind, Marianne. 
Hi, Mary. Here is a random dip into my stash. This is on, I'll tell you more about this. Here is a random dip into my stash and bigger scraps bag. I hope one or two colors or patterns catch your eye. Enjoy your making, whatever it becomes, with good memories of London. Lots of love, Marianne. P.S. Both moose and dogs on this quilt for inspiration. I really like pictorial quilts, especially the ones where you can't tell, like the animals that are depicted on the quilt are like, if it's a moose or a dog, like you just kind of can't tell because it's so real to me, you know? They're not like, these quilts are so beautiful and they're just made by mortal people, you know? Not like fine artists who know, you know, everything about proportion or, you know, shapes. <laughs> There's just like awesome animals on a quilt and they're not perfect, you know? I love, I love quilts like that. So this is a picture of one of those quilts and it's awesome. Thank you, Marianne. Okay, I mean, this is fabric from Marianne. I mean, uh, there's green, there's red, there's, oh yeah, that's bad. That's like a Civil War era or something, you know. It's amazing. Oh, here's, and, and this, and this, I mean, I think this is wrapped, Colette. I don't like, I'm not gonna say everybody's last name or anybody's last name because that's weird. I mean, and I mean, yeah, so Colette has given me, <gasps> Colette made this. Okay, well now I'm saying her name because I want you to buy her fabric. Go to colettemosscrop.com and buy her fabric. She runs workshops in Harrow, Northwest London. Yeah, you can learn screen printing and print workshops and are taking place and you can design all kinds of things. Wow, you can book, sessions can be booked for two to three people at a time to suit you. And I got some of it. Let me show you. I got some of it. London Modern Quilt Guild members, thank you. Um, here comes the sun. <laughs> it's extremely, extremely kind and um, yeah, you really made me feel welcome. And um, obviously, if you're watching this and you're not a person who quilts, <laughs> maybe you should be because, you know, a person on YouTube can keep you company and that's fine. But IRL quilt people will keep you company too and make you feel pretty wanted, you know. Thank you so much. And I will figure out what to do with this. I actually, I actually do need something else. I need an iron. <laughs> I don't have, actually have an iron, but by the time you see this, I will have gotten an iron, I promise. And I'll make something, I'll make something with this fabric before I leave. Okay, that's it. I hope you were kept company. And uh, for the quilt people, I hope that you enjoyed seeing some fabric. I know you did. <laughs>